All right, so you want full body shadows for your Unreal Engine green screen footage, and so do I, so let's figure it out together. You could fake them, sure, but let's be real. It's either a ton of work or it just never looks quite right. I'm gonna show you how I use a budget-friendly motion capture tool and a few tricks between Blender and Unreal Engine to create full body dynamic shadows that react to scene lighting. No $5,000 mocap suit required. Most of the time when we have a budget, we have an art team providing a practical surface for us. And that's ideal because all you need to do is refine the color of your shadow by adjusting the saturation and the occluded green spill and the rest can be digitally extended. When there's no floor at all, you can still selectively key out your shadows and use it as an underlay, but that pigeonholes us to a specific scene lighting, which is not always preferable. So I thought back to how I was able to use the Move One app to turn a K-pop dance routine into a crowd of choreographed digi doubles, and it worked surprisingly well. So I had someone film random handheld footage of me starting in an A pose, and I simultaneously recorded motion capture data on my phone using Move One. You can see the results side by side here. It's important to note that the results will be more accurate if you use Move Multicam, but since this video is just a proof of concept, using Move One with a single iPhone will work. Now it is credit based and not free, which kind of sucks, but it eliminates the need for a $5,000 motion capture suit. So it's fair to say I broke even. You can record up to 30 seconds, which is enough for most sequences. I export the motion as an FBX or USD data from Move One, so I can use it later in Unreal. Then I hop into Blender and track my footage. Once you've reconstructed your camera solve, you can import your pre-keyed sequence as a plane. Now using the Copy Attributes add-on, copy the location and rotation of your 3D camera to your image plane. In edit mode, grab along the local Z axis until your footage fits your frame. Then in object mode, we auto keyframe our footage using only the scale to make sure that it's constantly making contact with our floor. But we want this to work in Unreal, not just Blender, because otherwise the video title would be kind of misleading. So to get this over to Unreal, all you have to do is right click your plane and select object animation and bake action. You're gonna wanna make sure you check all these boxes. Now you can see that the exact transforms we created are baked as keyframes, non-relative to our camera movement since we cleared the parent, and it functions exactly the same. So congratulations, you effectively canceled out your handheld camera movement. Go ahead and bake the camera movement into keyframes as well by converting the constraint to an F-curve. Then you're going to want to export your camera along with your video plane and the floor for reference. This all will be exported as a USD file to bring into Unreal. If you want to know more about that process, give my other videos a watch. Now that we're on Unreal, we want to import that USD file using the USD Stage Editor. You might want to enable the USD Importer plugin. And if you did this right, it should create a level sequence for you with everything animated. I'm going to go ahead and create a material for our plane by using an image media source and a media player. Quick tip, if you switch your blend mode from translucent to alpha composite in your parent material, You'll eliminate that weird black cartoon fringe that shows up and it just feels much better. Import your Move 1 animation data as well. You can untick skeletal mesh if you don't want to import the robot thing because we're going to retarget the animation to another model that's human. I did some alignment of the animation with my footage and sequencer and also I lined up the initial position with my footage doing my best to match the scale. Now all we have to do is check hidden shadow and hide our actor in game. Now when we scrub through the footage we have a shadow that's actually not too bad. And the best part is, it can be dynamically altered by the lighting in our scene. Considering the other options we have, I think I might be onto something here. And I'd love to see how other people use this technique within their own projects and shorts. If this video helped you out in any way, feel free to subscribe. If not, it's all good because I'm going to keep these fresh ideas coming so that you can do cool stuff because I believe in you. Peace.